Yo, what is up everybody? Today I'm making a track on my modular and I came across a little thing that I wanted to try and do. Basically, I'm making a house music track and I've got a ride cymbal going on and I really want to sidechain compress this ride cymbal, but I don't have a sidechain or I don't have a compressor in this rack and I also don't even have like an extra envelope that I could use. Um, so I decided I would try to use a couple different things um, with the assimilator and using um, volume modulation. So basically amplitude modulation to achieve this the same effect. We're going to do this with the ride symbol. You can obviously do this with any sample inside of your assimilator, but I thought it'd be a cool video to make. And so we're just going to dive into it real quick. If you want the gist of it, just like down and dirty, what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do two different methods. We're basically taking the accent output. We're going to run that of my Metron system, my accent. We're going to run that into the CV input, and we're going to assign that to a negative um, CV amount. And so that's going to duck the symbol for us, and that's on amplitude modulation. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make an envelope uh, with the assimilator itself so that way we can basically have a free envelope using the um, assimilator and how we're going to do that is by sampling an offset and then using the assimilators um, built-in envelope to shape that so yeah if that's what you're looking to learn if that's what you were looking to learn um, you probably stop the video now and start experimenting but you know we're going to jam out and we're going to make some sounds and see how it goes so here is my drum sounds and that sounds like you got some bass in there too, but here's the drums. Now I'm going to add in the ride, show you what I mean. This is going to add a little bit of energy, right? And I really want this, I want that, you know, I don't want them just on the off beats, but I do want there to be a little bit more of a swell. So I do want to have that like offbeat feeling. And so what I'm going to do is, or what I want is a side chain sound for this, right? So if I mute the hi-hats and some of the other drums. We'll see, this is what we've got. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go out of the accent output, and I've already got some, some accents written, so I'll show you those here in a second. I'm gonna go out of accent one, this is my kick drum accent, and I'm just gonna run it into the CV, and I have this routed right now to the level, um, or uh, CV A, which is um, assigned to amplitude modulation. So now you can see I can adjust how much ducking we're gonna get. So very extreme example here, but I can get a little bit less extreme with something like this. And then hear that with the mix. Bring up some hi-hats and stuff. So that's pretty close to what I'm going for. Let's hear it with the rest of the instruments. Maybe bring that amount down a little bit more. So that's pretty nice. So one of the things about this method is if I want to adjust the amount with inside of the assimilator, the amount of ducking, I'm gonna to have to go into this menu. So in order to not have to do that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run the accent through an attenuator before we get to the CV and then we're just going to turn that CV amount, you know, we're gonna turn it all the way down, negative one. And now on this fader, I have the amount of ducking we, we need. So that's like a nice way to get around not having a control inside of the assimilator for how much ducking we're gonna get. Sounds pretty good. I mean, I like it pretty extreme like that. All right, cool. So that is one way to do it. It actually sounds way better than I thought that it was going to, you know? It is kind of rigid. If we listen to it by itself, you know, and we take it to this extreme, it is kind of rigid, but it does sound like smoother than I expected for us just sending a gate in here. Now to show you what my accent gate is, you can see my, my, my custom white Metron here. It might be a little hard to see, but you can see I've got accents on the first two steps of every downbeat. And so this means we're going to get that ducking right on the upbeat. If we shorten that a little bit, we get a little bit less of a, of a 
of a duck, like, you know, a, a shorter duck. Make it even longer. You know, we could mess around with that, but it's going to get choppy real quick. But I do like the way it sounds short like this. Like, I think that sounds pretty good, you know? That sounds like a real faster, you know, faster envelope. But yet again, there we go. It's just, all we're doing is just ducking straight down to a point, you know? So if we've got this fader up, we're going all the way down to silence. If we got it somewhere in the middle, we're only going down about halfway. That's why it sounds kind of natural still. But I think using this with any sort of sample that's not like a ride cymbal, you know, might this might be a little bit distracting and might not be exactly what you're going for. So there's a couple things you could do, right? You could use an envelope. Again, I don't have one in here. You could also use something like an envelope follower, which again, I don't have in here. If I had a time warp in here, I would definitely be taking the output of my assimilator running it into the time warp using its envelope following capability and then doing the exact same thing, just running that envelope into this um, into this channel, into the CV channel and doing the, the volume modulation that way. But I don't have those. So one of the ways that I can do this still, if I want an envelope, I'm going to make one out of a simulator. So how I do that is I'm just going to take this offset from 410. I took out the input. So now I've just got five volts. I'm going to run that into the input here. I'm going to go into sampling setup. We can see now that if it's turned all the way up, we're almost at zero volts. You hopefully can see that on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say I want that to go to channel seven because the channel seven is blank right now. I'm going to hold sampling setup and I'm just going to sample this five volt offset, right? That's probably long enough. I don't need it to be super long. I'm going to say that I like that. Keep it there. Now on channel seven, because I used DC coupling, so I had to make sure that in my sampling setup I had DC coupling on, which I do. And then all these outputs are DC coupled. So now channel seven, this is just gonna send that five volt uh, signal out, right? But because it has an envelope, it will actually attenuate that in, in a shape of, a, of an envelope for me. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to take the trigger we're using for our kick drum which is trigger one here. We're going to molt that with a stackable. My cables are kind of tight here, you know, because of the way I do things. And we're gonna run that signal into channel seven. And then we're gonna take the output of channel seven and we're gonna run that into that CV input that we've been using. So there we go, now we've got it. Let's listen to this hi-hat. And sounds like we're kind of getting the same thing again, which is nice. So let's go into channel seven. And you can see when I hit it, we're muting it. So that means it's working. We can go into the envelope now. And I think one of the things we want to change is I'm using 100% gates for my kick. I'm going to turn those back into triggers. Um, the kick drum I'm using, just a 909, short 909 in one shot mode. So there's no reason for me to have 100% gates there. Um, and now with the release, you can totally hear, there's my eighth notes. I can bring that envelope back and control the length. And then if I wanted to, which I kind of do, I've got this 410, this one's going into, let's see, I'm gonna put it into CVC. And now this guy, because it releases on CVC, I believe I should be able to, is this the right one? CV1C. I should be able to change the release amount. I mean, I should be, it should be totally working right now. But for some reason, we're just not getting any change on that release. But anyways, that's how you can make the, the, the envelope. That's what I really wanted to show, was just making an envelope. So now we kind of got that same sound. Bring everything else in. So, you know, for this example, like, you can also do the same thing. You could run this output through an attenuator and back in. Then you can do um, 
envelope amount or sidechain amount. And, you know, I think I would opt for that over the release amount. Um, I think that using, you know, I might want that for like, like I said, for other instruments, but for this ride symbol thing, it sounds pretty good the way it is. So for what, for my purposes, I'm probably going to end up uh, going back to the first example, using accent output for this, and then that'll free me up a channel. However, um, really it just works out for whatever you want. So that's it. That's the video. I just wanted to show real quick on how to make a cool side chain kind of sound. And um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to go back out of here and we're just going to get my, get my uh, side chain back using this accent input. Let's hear what that sounds like again. And that's it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe and we will see you all next time. Peace. Ooh.